Welcome to the Gadget 360 show. This is Rajiv Makni and I have a fantastic show for you today in every which way possible. You know how we've been constantly asked what technology can actually take care of viruses, especially COVID-19. Until now, I've been quite skeptical. I mean, I've been hearing about a great amount of technology, but I've been quite skeptical about bringing it to you because eventually these are claims that are being made and there's really been no history and there's really been no way that we can look at the legacy of a product. But today we're going to feature one product that actually claims that it can take care of 99.9% .9 of COVID viruses in the air and on the surfaces. It's a product that's been making a lot of name for itself, the Shaiko can. But like I said, if it's amazing, I still look at it with a huge amount of skepticism. We'll review the product and we will also talk to the people behind it. Then we'll move on to a lot more, an air purifier that is as portable and cool as you can actually think, a plug and play. Let's get started with today's Gadget 360 show. Remember the Doge meme which rose to popularity? Yes, it's in the news again. Started as a joke in late 2013, Dogecoin is now amongst the top 10 digital currencies. Dogecoin is a cryptocurrency created by software engineers as a fun alternative to digital cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. After calling cryptocurrency a hustle last week, Elon Musk conducted a poll on Twitter if Tesla should accept Dogecoin as a payment method. This not only got an overwhelmingly positive response in just 20 minutes, but also spiked the value of Dogecoin by 20%. Our top story today is the Shaiko Can, and this is a device that has been making a lot of name for itself. It's priced at about 25,000 rupees, and the claim is that this has technology built in that can neutralize the COVID-19 and influenza viruses. Now, this is a big claim to make. And of course, this is a heaven sent if it works. And there has been a lot of amazing press, a lot of organizations, a lot of restaurants, a lot of institutions have started using this. But there is also, you know, because it's such supposedly amazing technology, there is skepticism also. So this is what I'm going to do. The claim is that this can actually neutralize the COVID-19 virus in a room and it can neutralize 99.9% .9 of the virus in the air and on surfaces. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a two part to this. One, I'm going to review this for you as to this is what we believe and we've been told this device can do. When we come back, we'll talk to the people behind it, including the inventor. I'm going to throw some hard questions to them. There have been many breakthrough innovations against COVID-19, mainly from the medical community. A lot of people point out though how the tech field hasn't contributed much. More than a year later, we are finally seeing a number of devices that have been announced and claim that they can be a massive weapon against COVID-19. Today on the show, we are reviewing one such product. This is Shikokan's virus attenuation device, which uses a proprietary photon-mediated electron emission technology to inhibit the coronavirus. Does it really work? What technology is it using? How do we know if it's working? How effective is it? If it can eliminate viruses, then how does it not harm humans? Many questions. So let's dive in. Shaiko Can has gone ahead with a very subtle design for their virus attenuation device. It is a cylindrical shaped unit just like the design of the device, the installation process with an included wall mount is simple as well. That being said, the unit does have a substantial amount of weight to it. Once set up, the unit works essentially like a simple plug and play device. It's time to understand the science of what the company claims will neutralize the influenza family of viruses as well as the coronavirus by 99.9%. Now, COVID-19 virus is a positive sense virus whose S protein attaches to the human cell through the ACE2 receptors. In layman's terms, the positive charge of the virus infects us by attaching itself to the negative charge of our human cells. Once in contact, the virus infuses its RNA into the cell and starts to multiply, infecting the body. This is where the attenuation device comes into action. The Shikokan unit continuously emits photons in real time that form an electron cloud in the space where it is installed. Simply put, the device creates negatively charged electrons that neutralize the positive charge of the S protein of coronavirus, essentially disabling it from infecting a person. 
Additionally, the brand claims that the device does not use any harmful chemicals or produce ozone to inhibit the virus. Also, it does not impact fungus, bacteria or human cells, but it simply inhibits the coronavirus. The company claims that this technology has been verified by laboratories around the globe. It has been tested for bacterial behavior by the Scalene Energy Research Institute, where it was established that the device does not affect bacterial growth. The device has also been tested to make sure that it does not generate ozone while emitting photons. Another scaling report also verifies that the device is proven to inhibit viral particles in air and surface. The brand pitches this device for both domestic and public spaces. It is priced at 24,999 rupees and time now to speak to the people behind this device. So I'm going to start off with one of the, some of the people that have actually been speaking about it. Uh, Umesh Kadane, Pref Professor and Head of Physics Department at the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, has actually had a few questions about the exact technology. He says electrons cannot survive in air. They're absorbed by other atoms and molecules. You need to do this in a vacuum. Nowhere else has it ever really happened. So uh, can we start with this? How are you being able to do what others are saying no one has been able to do? You know, you know, there are uh, uh, super alloys. I think you must have definitely heard of super alloys. Super alloys are alloys that is uh, that has got uh, great properties. Super alloys have been there right from the ancient uh, times. Uh, so, in the PME, we use a super alloy. It's a 19 element super alloy. When this uh, PME is excited, when it is excited, okay, it produces photons and when this photon strike surfaces it emanates electrons which we call it as photoelectrons you see okay and these electrons are short-lived okay i agree that because they, the moment they strike they strike nearby things and they neutralize but you have to understand one thing the machine continuously produces it so it, it, this happens uh, on a continuous basis so that is why you will have uh, electrons all the time so how does it only kill the coronavirus or, like you said, influenza viruses? Now, if you take uh, the uh, uh, coronavirus or uh, your uh, influenza virus, okay, they all have, uh, a, it's an envelope virus and this envelope of we call it as uh, uh, caspid, this has got what is called a spike protein. Now, this spike protein, uh, which is uh, positive sense, negative seeking. So here what we do is uh, we are taking that opportunity and we are binding the electrons, the electrons which is emanated, they, we are binding them uh, against the uh, S proteins. Now I'm going to go back to the, uh, the when you spoke about the super alloy. Uh, once again, there's a lot of talk that there's no documentation and no technical information on any such alloy. You're calling it a super alloy. Because the alloy is made, uh, uh, invented by, and made by us. Even if this device has the capacity to in, uh, inactivate viral protons, the fact that uh, you know a subatomic particle does not have any way of distinguishing a viral proton from a human protein, uh, how are we, how are people how are humans safe anywhere around this device? Are you talking about having it there twenty four seven? First of all, uh, it has got a uh, the virus has got a specific protein number one. Now we are only disabling the mechanism of action. We are only disabling the mechanism of action and appears. The device simply is designed to disable the uh, the S protein of a corona family of virus. Claim about the US FDA's approval. Uh, now the approval or you know whatever the claim is made by the company uh, is basically under this uh, you know emergency act uh, where it's for sterilizers, disinfected devices, air purifiers, and stuff like that during the COVID-19 public health emergency guidelines, where they say that they will not object to these kind of devices. This doesn't seem like you have US FDA approval for what you claim Shaikokan does. Uh, the US FDA, uh, uh, during this uh, pandemic, so the pandemic came out suddenly, a lot of people started coming out with uh, uh, new solutions. Uh, but then the new solutions, nobody knows whether the, how well the new solution work. Mm -hmm. So 
the FDA put a minimum minimum uh, test requirements, and then they uh, uh, created what we call it as enforcement discretion. Okay, so enforcement discretion, a device which is being cleared, not approved, cleared under enforcement discretion, can be sold in United States as long as uh, COVID. 19 emergency health emergency is there so what we have done is we have already filed for the 510k asking them that this would be continued beyond the uh, uh, beyond the uh, uh, pandemic what would you say to people in one sentence that would actually make them believe you because you know there is a big risk out here uh, this is what you are claiming so how confident are you that you are not playing around with people's lives the the uh, psychocan device has undergone 25 virology studies i don't think any device anywhere has undergone that much what we have done is that wherever customers uh, need to review it we get an nda signed and submit all the reports to them so all the customers who are taking decisions both on safety and efficacy look through the reports and get them evaluated how do you actually uh, map an area for this to be at its optimum level so for a home uh, you know because the current virus is extremely virulent mm-hmm. and transmits very uh, uh, very you know with a very high rate uh, for full protection you need to have it in every room our final impression while the shyco can seems like a very promising device anyone considering it right now should wait till some peer reviews appear in reputable medical journals we will keep tracking the story now let's move on to something else that i think is very interesting it's a portable very very small air purifier plug and play i mean most air purifiers are plug and play you're not doing anything more but this one is really small talks about using different technology than typical air purifiers let's take a look at this one the covid-19 pandemic is creating havoc for mankind now that it is proven that the novel coronavirus is airborne it becomes paramount for us to make sure that we have a robust air purification system around us a device that not only deals with basic germs and bacteria but can also protect us against covid-19 today on the show we are reviewing one such product by o2 cure The device that you see on your screen is plug and play by the brand. This portable device by the brand utilizes RGF's patented PHI technology which is proven to neutralize the coronavirus by 99% from air and surfaces. In terms of design, the plug and play by O2 Cure is perhaps one of the most portable air purification devices that we've come across. The profile of the air purifier is more industrially inclined. The lack of a fancy design buyers who are into aesthetics may not connect with it instantly. Compact and easy to set up, we faced no issues in getting the device up and running. Also, unlike conventional air purifiers, the plug and play hangs from a wall rather than being erected on the floor. Additionally, it is fairly easy to take out the electrostatic filter and clean it. Now before we get down to testing this air purifier it is important to understand the technology that it packs in utilizing RGF's patented photohydroionization technology plug and play can neutralize 99% of molds bacteria and viruses including covid-19 this phi technology develops an advanced oxidation plasma with the help of a uv light targeted on a hydrated quad metallic target In this process the technology creates hydroperoxides, superoxide ions and hydroxides. The brand claims that the PHI cell has a lifespan of 30,000 hours which reassures that the product is a long-term investment. This technology has been tested by the American Bioanalysis Virology Laboratory to neutralize coronavirus by 99.9% from air and surfaces. This action against airborne diseases also leads to a reduced risk of cross infection. Now that we know how this air purifier works, we can test it in real time. Turning on the plug and play, the first observation we made was how silent this air purifier is. This is surprising since there are multiple elements jammed into its petite structure. O2 Cure claims that the device provides coverage for rooms with sizes up to 500 square feet. After about 1 hour of keeping the air purifier turned on, the air around us felt fresher and there was a noticeable reduction in bad odor. 
We kept the air purifier turned on for longer periods of time and the air around us only got better. However, we couldn't help but notice that this device tends to get warmed up when used for prolonged periods. Before we wrap up this review, it's important to talk about the downsides of this product. For one, AutoCure does not provide the user any manual or auto controls on the plug and play to configure the device. Additionally, the lack of certain essential smart features might make it less desirable for domestic buyers. There are no touch capacitive controls or support for smart home apps like Alexa or Google Home. So should you consider plug and play as your next air purifier? We have a categorical answer for that. If you're someone who's looking for a commercial air purifier, then at 41,999 rupees, this is the device for you. As for domestic buyers, if you are someone who can look past the industrial standard design and lack of smart features, then you can surely consider it. Let's take a quick break right now on the Gadget 360 show. When we come back, lots more. Our next review is the Harman Kardon Esquire Mini 2. Small little portable speaker, something that is important for, you know, the kind of life we are living right now. Uh, we have our phones, most of our music is on it, but sometimes we just want you know, the speakers on a phone are not good enough. You want something that plays good music, but it's not those bulky big speakers. Let's find out if the Esquire Mini 2 could actually play a role in your life. Harman Kardon, the veteran audio products brand, has taken on a new challenge and is branching out into products that are in demand these days. The case in point is their latest portable Bluetooth speaker, the Esquire Mini 2. So today on the show, we put our ear to this product and find out, is this Bluetooth speaker worthy of the Harman Kardon badge? And more importantly, is it worthy of your attention? Harman Kardon has pitched this Bluetooth speaker as a rather premium option in this category. And we can see why. It's not every day that you see a chic leather pouch bundled with a device of this nature. Talking about the product itself, the Esquire Mini 2 is indeed one of the best looking gadgets we've come across in a long time. Comprising mostly of metal components, the unit with us is in black color and it looks stunning. The ergonomics of this Bluetooth speaker is also quite favorable since it is compact and lightweight. Unfortunately, there is no official IP rating on the device, which means that you have to be careful with it around water. On the connectivity front, we get a USB type A port, a USB type C port and a 3.5 mm audio jack, essentials for a Bluetooth speaker. Connecting our smartphone to Esquire Mini 2, it was time to find out what this junior Harman Kardon is capable of. We started out by playing some of the latest hip hop tracks on the speaker on higher volumes. Surprisingly, the sound coming out of the 8 watt front facing speaker was really loud but lacked bass. The results didn't change a lot even when we lowered the volume levels. The sound was crystal clear and retained details for both the vocals and the beat but had a major deficiency in punch. Then we decided to tune into some slow jazz tracks and understand how the Mini 2 performed when we played a polar opposite genre. And yes, the performance was smoother this time. Another feature of the Esquire Mini 2 is its ability to become a speakerphone. What it essentially means is that a user can take phone calls with this device. In terms of battery backup, the Esquire Mini 2 gave us a mileage of about 6 hours before we had to hook it up with a wire. This battery performance can be deemed satisfactory, but if you are a heavy user or someone who likes to travel, then it's not the best for you. A standout feature, however, is that the Mini 2 can act as a power bank as well. And with that, it is time to wrap up this review. The Esquire Mini 2 packs in all the best features that Harman Kardon has to offer. It looks great and it carries some practical options as well. Unfortunately, what it doesn't bring along from its Harman Kardon legacy is the stellar sound quality. The speaker performs well for its category, but for a hardcore audiophile, it is not the best option. At 10,000 rupees, you can consider this Bluetooth speaker if you are into aesthetics and audio performance does not concern you much. That then was the show for this week, but remember, we've got lots more coming up next week. Do join me then.